Hi everyone, in today's video, we'll go through a very simple technique that is useful to compare two uh, set of vectors. This is often needed when the vectors are very multidimensional and that uh, you want to have a quantity to be able to compare how similar they are. Um, usually this vector could be a set, if we're talking machine learning, a set of features uh, that represent, let's say, uh, a particular data point. So in this uh, video, I'm going to go through what cosine similarity is, some example of it being used for a different application. I'm going to go through the whole theory about like the derivation uh, of how you get cosine similarity from the dot product. And after that, we're going to actually go and uh, look at the Python code um, and some real usage with like second learning. So the, the gist of the methodology is to create two n-dimensional uh, vectors with your data, where, like I said, n is the different features that you have and that you want to take into consideration for the comparison. And then what you do is, uh, since cosine is, uh, you take an angle and goes from minus one to one, what it happened is that uh, the cosine of the angle between the two vectors uh, will have a measure of similarity. So if the two vectors are really close to each other's, uh, like on the right side here, um, the cosine of this will be uh, of this angle will be closer to one. So this is not exactly one. And if they are completely opposite, it will be uh, minus one. Uh, this uh, in in this paper, the, a link into the description called the similarity of global value chain network based measure. Uh, they actually use cosine similarity, which is um, interesting how they've done it because they've constructed the graph, and on this graph they had a bunch of um, data uh, a feature per node in the graph and they were running the cosine similarity on each of uh, each of these nodes so in this particular case they find the nodes in the graph as individual sector within the country and the links were the value added contribution relationship so with these nodes they were able to construct a vector for each of the individual sector nodes and basically what they did is compare every one node to every other node um, so what they, they, they got was a bunch of uh, similarity uh, metric ranging, in this case, from 0 uh, to 1. Um, they plotted it here, and then they also uh, constructed another similarity measure. There's a, there's a bunch of them. Jacquard is one. Cosine similarity is one. Um, we're going to do something similar afterward in, in the notebook with uh, some real uh, data, uh, but we're going to use a a bar plot to uh, check out the distribution. So uh, a more general example uh, that you may bump into much more often than other um, type of uh, data type uh, is just textual data. Um, so basically you have two texts and then you want to compare them to see how similar uh, they are very useful for NLP type of stuff. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to do a count vectorizer type of, of things where you're going to count like the occurrence of every word um, in each of the two texts and create like a big uh, vector of that. And this will be your vector A and B. And then you're going to do, you can just plug into the formula and then you'll be able to have like the the, the two vector and look at the angle between each of them. So that cosine similarity is, is uh, can be used for any sort of data. As, as long as you can create the vector, it works. Um, I have did uh, two article and tutorial, uh, especially specifically uh, about uh, text data um, in the notebook. So let's get into the theory and you're going to see the formula for cosine similarity is, is pretty simple. We have a cos of the angle a equal to a dot b divided by the magnitude of a uh, times the magnitude of b and a, b are two vector of uh, the same length uh, non-zero. So what we get is, is basically something like this. Um, it gives us a quantity that is bounded between minus one and one because of the limit of the cosine. Uh, and then uh, what it means actually is that if it's you're at uh, uh, a cosine of a zero, you're, the two vectors are orthogonal. So what that means is they are not related um, in, um, in much ways. And this goes into like a n-dimensional space. If you have a cosine uh, of the angle of one, which this is not one, this is like close to one, like if you, I was to draw one, you will see like just one big uh, uh, arrow. Um, then they're they're similar, right? Because uh, 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 theta of minus one means they're opposite. Uh, so uh, 
this. It means that when one goes, one vector goes in this direction, the other vector goes completely in the opposite direction. So in a nutshell, that's it. And sometime in your data, maybe the opposite doesn't make any sense. So sometime you'll see also it bounded between zero and one instead of just uh, had the full range. Let's actually look at the, how we even get this formula. And um, if you know a bit linear algebra, it comes from uh, literally the dot product definition. Um, so the dot product definition is like uh, the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cos of the angle between A and B. So what we do is we just divide by the magnitude multiplied and then we get the cosine similarity formula. So what each of the elements are is, is pretty simple. This is the dot product. So uh, so it's simply like the each element of A and B multiplied and then you sum them up. And then this the, the magnitude here is also called the Euclidean norm, uh, which is basically the element of A exponent two, and then you sum them all up and then you square. And basically you multiply the two and those are two scal scalar. Um, that's it. So that's roughly the structure of this. Um, I mean, it's a very simple uh, formula to wrap your head around. So I've put the whole thing on Kegel. So you can follow the link below and just, you can start to play around with the, the cells. I uh, left some comment, but we're, I'm going to go through it in a few seconds. So here we are in the notebook. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through an actual uh, usable uh, implementation with sklearn and then I'm going to go through uh, unrolling it a bit just so that you see uh, like the formula that we've done written in Python. And after that, we're going to use um, a simple data set to actually just run some cosine similarity between a bunch of um, data points here. It's a dummy data set uh, about apples. Um, it's directly in the notebook. You can run any cell you want. Let's get started. So um, here, a good implementation of cosine similarity. You can directly use uh, uh, sklearn. Uh, you can also use scipy, which sklearn use. Uh, but uh, in scipy, there's the cosine distance, which is one minus the cosine similarity. It's much easier to just straight up use uh, sklearn. And you're going to see afterward, it has some neat um, implementation details when you have multiple vector you want to compare against each other exactly like in the in the paper you saw um, at the beginning so as you can see into this example you have x and y is over here and then in x it's actually two vectors not just one and they have each three features um, so this is x1 this is x2 this is y1 this is y2 and then you compare the two and then you get zero zero and then that and that and then this is x1 against y1 this is x1 against uh, y2, I believe. Uh, and then x2, uh, x2 against y1 and uh, x2 against y2. And you get those four. So if you were to look at the sklearn metric dot pairwise cosine similarity, you will see that it this, this thing, cosine similarity in this specific API, it take a 2D, um, 2D array. Um, because the first dimension is the number of vector and the second dimension is the number of features. Um, so that's it. So the output of this, uh, of this thing is always the number of vector X times the number of vector Y. And so in this case, it's two times two, this is four. Um, and that's it. Uh, so it's, like I said, it's very useful, uh, to calculate when you have like, uh, a whole grid of, uh, of a feature usually you're going to segment your data into like one class and another class and then you're going to check how similar they are maybe take the median of whatever you get or uh, look at the distribution which we're going to do afterward um, but that's the idea and you see it's pretty straightforward to uh, to use if we kind of remove uh scikit-learn from this and just use like some uh numpy and linear algebra in order to create ourselves the cosine similarity like it, this is not also rocket science in this case. Uh, we have the dot product of X and Y. In this case, this cosine similarity that we've created only take one uh, 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 one vector, right? So not a, a whole bunch of them. Uh, and then what we're doing is taking the Euclidean norm here of X times the Euclidean norm of Y, and we divide the dot product by that. 
So if we run this with uh, this specific vector and this other specific vector, we get 0 0.577, which is exactly what we got here when we did this one against this one. So if I, I was to unroll a bit this, I mean, this is not a linear algebra um, tutorial, but just to have like some idea about what this thing is doing. So the dot product here, you give X and Y, and then what it's gonna do is just gonna take the total of uh, each of the element of X and Y multiplied. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And then the Euclidean norm is um, it's kind of it's kind of simple too. It's the same kind of structure and process. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take each of the element and then put it into a power of two. You sum them all up, and then you get to take the square root at the, the end of this. Um, so this, these two, is what's happening uh, when you're doing dot and then norm here in a very not unoptimized way uh, with this piece of code in Python. So if we were to recreate this cosine similarity uh, function, it will look like this, but it's just exactly the same thing. Okay, so if we look at the actual real data, so that thing over here, the Apple quality data set, the bunch of uh, data points here that we have, uh, and then it's a it's about Apple quality. Um, not sure how the quality was assessed, but I assume it's a, a good a good assessment. So there's a bunch of good Apple and a bunch of bad Apple, and they have a bunch of attributes. So let's say the size, the weight, the sweetness, the crunchiness, blah blah. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of it. Like I said, it's a bit of a dummy type of data set. So here we're gonna uh, kind of just get the data. Uh, loaded from this uh, this uh, input section. We're gonna drop uh, any NA. Uh, the last one was actually a trademark, so we 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 cleave uh, we cleave it off, and we get like all of our rows. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, and separate the good and the bad uh, apple into data set because what I want to do right now is just to be able to. Uh, compare good and bad and how similar or dissimilar they are. So in this case, I'm gonna do the summary for just for one um, one apple, one good versus one bad apple afterward. So here, I'm separating the two data set uh, like this. I'm getting a bunch of uh, the feature I care about. The other one, I don't care. Um, here I'm doing some transformation because uh, the, the data type was a string. And I'm just taking like two sample, and I'm gonna calculate the cosine similarity between uh, the sample good apple vector and the sample bad apple vector, and I get something that is really close to z to zero. So if you remember here, what it means is that they are literally like this, unrelated. Uh, so this is the good apple, this is the bad apple, and there's no, there's nothing that uh, is saying they are similar or dissimilar. So what would happen now if we were to uh, take a look at like all of the apples, all of the good one and all of the bad one, and just create like a, uh, uh, each of the apple, the good apple vector with each of the bad apple vector and compare each of the permutation of them. Like is, is this one that I, that I took uh, here for this test, the uh, zero index one and the second index one for the bad apple uh, representative of the whole data set. We're, we're going to find out by looking at the whole data set. Um, so we create a bunch of uh, a good uh, cosine array here, um, and then we're going to just plot it. Um, so I'm going to take a bunch of, uh, of uh, metrics, so the average, uh, the actually, this is the median. Sorry, give me a second here. This is the median cosine similarity here and there. And then uh, I'm going to calculate the median of this cosine array, the minimum, maximum. It's going to do that. And I'm going to plot an, hist an histogram, so a barrel plot of like all of the, all of the different uh, uh, possibility. So what I get is that the median, it, it, median is close to zero, but it's at 0 0.1. So there's like a small skew toward more similar between the bad and the good and the bad apple here, uh, the comparison of the cosine similarity. And the minimum is at like minus one, the maximum is at one, right? So there's apple that are more like this, 
there's apple that are more like this and in the in the the the, the distribution here the median is somewhere around here so if we look at the distribution this is what we get it's a nice one there's not that much at uh, minus one but there are some there's not that much at one but there are more than the minus one and there's like a small skew here toward um, the right we could calculate the skewness but you get an idea so what this histogram tells us is that the apples are fairly different to each other because if like everything was here and then they were all very similar right there's not that much uh, information uh, on this front like uh, if you were to train the machine learning model to separate the good and the bad apple there was not much that they could do but if they're orthogonal is it means that they're kind of unrelated to each other which is in this case is a good sign if they were opposite there's also um, in this particular case uh, differences between uh, the two so that you can pick up in the machine learning model before we uh, postulate that this is good and you can train the machine model on that one good thing to test would be like what if I'm just comparing the good apples with the good apples and then the bad apples with the bad apples um, not mixing the two together if I get the same plot it doesn't tell me much it means that there's difference with all the apples kind of similarly so all apples are kind of different so there's no more information here um, so this is exactly what we did. We did this one for the good ones and then had the same thing for the for the bad ones. Um, and what we get here, this is the good apple uh, metric. So they're, uh, so they're at, like the median is at 0 0.11, uh, minus one and then one for the maximum. Um, so there's, there's still kind of a, some skewness to the right, but it's pretty similar to, um, to this one actually. Um, a bit less into that range um, but like it, it's a bit more flat over here and I think there's a bit more of the of the one so a, a lot more similar than dissimilar um, so there's there's similarity between the good apples if we do the same thing for the bad ones um, the bad ones are even more similar with each others uh, than the the good ones so here we have a median cosine similarity of like 0 0.22 um, so, like, if you look at all of these uh, data points to, together, what it tells me is that um, there's some dissimilarity between the two. If you look only at the bad apple population, um, they're more similar to each other's, right? There seems to be a cluster that is more uh, similar. They're less likely to be dissimilar to each other's. Um, and then the, the good ones are kind of more of the unrelated side there's maybe a more variety of way an apple can be good um so that's kind of what you get you get a kind of a good idea of like the data point uh, similarity so that's it so to summarize cosine similarity very useful to have in your back pocket whenever you have like some sort of comparison to be doing with uh, two set of highly dimensional data points um, or set of, of data and don't forget you just need to kind of convert whatever structure you have to a vector as soon as you have a vector uh, of features then you can uh, you can do that uh, easily you can do a bunch of stuff you can remove features you can really use that as a as a probing mechanism to look at similarity so if you can combine this uh, method with like others you get a you get a, uh, a better quantitative feeling about the similarity and dissimilarity about your data more than just like looking at a bunch of plot and say like yeah these two seems more like each other or more different um, so that's it i hope this was useful uh, notebook is over there uh, in the description and uh, if you have any question let me know and i wish you all a great week Thanks.